This is the new M2 MacBook Air, which has been completely redesigned from the new thinner and lighter body, the narrow bezel display, and most importantly, it's got the new upgraded M2 chip. But it's also $200 more than the previous M1. So for the same price of $1,200, you can upgrade the M1 to either 16GB of RAM or 512 gigs of storage while you can only get 8GB of RAM and 256 gigs storage on the newer model. And on top of that, there seems to be some problem with the performance on the 256 gigs M2 Max. So for $1,200, will you be better off getting the upgraded M1 or the new base model M2? Let's find out. In this video, we went with the M1 MacBook Air with 16GB of RAM mainly for the performance and for the M2 it's just a base model with midnight color because it looked cool. First off, let's see what you'll get on the M2 MacBook Air that you can't get on the M1. First obviously is the new thinner and lighter design with 4 color options to choose from like this new midnight color. You'll also get an upgraded better looking display with thinner bezel and it's a little bit brighter at 500 nits instead of 400 on the M1. There's a MagSafe charging port, an upgraded 1080p webcam, an improved function row keyboard, an option to upgrade to 24GB of RAM and of course the new M2 chipset. That's pretty much it. So what it's like between the two when you're actually using them. Well, first obvious thing is the body. So even though the new body has a flat design, the sides and the corners are more rounded than before making it much more comfortable to hold and carry around versus the tapered shape and squared corner on the M1. And even though it's only 50 grams lighter, the weight distribution on this body makes it feel much much lighter when holding it in hand when compared to the M1 where most of the weight is on one side of the body. For the keyboard, it's not much of a difference from the previous model except for the full height function row, which is way easier to press than the half height function keys on the M1. I would say the overall typing experience is quite a bit better on the M1 because the body of the M2 is flat. I found typing on the wedge shaped body on the M1 Air feels much comfortable. And speaking of comfort, if you have sweaty hands like me, the palm rest is going to look gross on both, but if you go for the midnight color on the M2, it's going to look even more gross because your sweat is more visible on darker surfaces. Now, there's a MagSafe charging port on the MacBook Air, which to most people would be a huge upgrade to what the M1, which you don't have to sacrifice one for charging. So you're going to end up with one more port. But for me, I connect my MacBook to the monitor via Type-C cable, which it does charge the Mac at the same time, so I basically have no use of the added MagSafe port. And I also love traveling light, so I love the idea of one cable for all device. So Type-C is my obvious choice for charging. For the display, it's a bit larger but not that drastically different, but it sure looks a lot more appealing with the thinner bezel. Although it's not much thinner on the side, it's mainly on the top part. And if you're worried about the notch, I'd say don't be. Most people get used to it in no time and you'll get more screen estate to work with, plus the top menu is quite a lot larger, making it easier to click on. But if you really hate the notch, you can always use the apps in full screen. But if you really, really hate it, just buy the M1. Now let's talk about the part where many people are worried, the performance. For synthetic benchmarks such as Geekbench 5, the M2 MacBook Air came out on top. It's no surprise that the M2 is going to outperform the M1. However, when we take a look at the SSD speed, things changed. The M1 nearly doubled the performance of the M2. And that's because the base M2 Max only features a single NAND chip instead of two like the M1. And that's why SSD performance is nearly halved. And this is where the problem lies because Macs often relies on memory swap when they are running out of RAM, so having a slower SSD will definitely affect the performance, especially with the 8GB model with 256GB SSD with one NAND chip. But how bad does this problem go? Well, let me say it this way. If you are not doing a ton of professional work that requires quite a bit of performance, you're not going to notice any difference. Because from a couple weeks of using both 
M1 and M2 MacBook Air from web browsing, watching YouTube, Netflix, script writing, and even casual photo editing. I don't really feel any performance difference between the two on these light loaded tasks. But where I see the difference in performance between these two is when I'm doing any RAM intensive tasks. For example, Lightroom. While editing a couple dozen photos in Lightroom isn't really a problem, it chilled through color correction, cropping, adding presets and effects with minimal effort. However, exporting does. For Lightroom export, we tried exporting 50 45 megapixel photos shot on the Canon R5 with some editing, presets, plus grain effects, and the M1 MacBook Air took 3 minutes and 59 seconds, while the M2 took 5 minutes and 15 seconds, which is around 30% slower than the M1. And that's because exporting photos uses tons of RAM and 8GB is definitely not sufficient. So here comes memory swap. But due to SSD being slower to swap, there's the bottleneck and that what's make it slow. So what about video editing? I tested video editing on DaVinci Resolve because that's where I edit, but you'll see similar results across the Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. While editing video seems like an easy task for both machines at first, even 4K 422 10-bit footage felt smooth. But as soon as you start to add transitions, effects, or stacking footage, both the M1 and M2 struggled. There are drop frames pretty much everywhere there is an effect. Then I tried exporting the 2 minutes of color graded 4K clip, and the M1 took 4 minutes and 18 seconds while the M2 took 2 minutes and 59 seconds. Well this time it turned out the M2 was faster at exporting video than the M1. This is very likely due to the more powerful processor and more powerful media engine. Plus, exporting video doesn't actually use as much RAM as exporting photo does anyway. You see, these machines weren't meant to be the powerhouse to edit thousands of photos or edit professional 4K videos by any means. There are Macs that were meant for that kind of work. You know, the expensive ones. The MacBook Air was meant to be the beginner's choice or users that have liked to moderate use such as web-based workflow, casual photo and video editing, some stuff like that. So back to the question of which Mac to buy. So for $1200, the M1 MacBook Air is definitely a better value of choice because of the upgraded RAM or SSD, but you'll be missing out on the newer design and features mentioned earlier. So which Mac do I recommend? Maybe the M1 MacBook Air with 512GB of SSD is probably the sweet spot for $1200. But again, it really depends on each individual workflow. And by the way, if you want to go with the 16GB of RAM and 512GB SSD storage on the M2, maybe take a look at the 14-inch MacBook Pro on Best Buy instead. It's only 50 to 100 bucks more depending on the sales they have. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Like if you like this video, sub if we want to see more of these contents in the future. See you guys next time. Stay safe.